again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am delighted to show you an extremely easy, lovely textured stitch called the Corded Shells Stitch. Very, very simple. It is just a two row repeat perfect for that mindful stitching, and uh, I love how this came out. Now this particular yarn, it's not something that I've used before, but uh, Mary Jo, one of my friends, sent this to me. Absolutely love the colorway, and it's so soft and squishy. All right, this yarn is called Rainbow Line Smile Fashion Gradient Yarn. Uh, it doesn't have a colorway, but I do know that it is apparently a 50 gram ball. Now for this piece, I used two of these um, and it doesn't have really much on the label. It is 100% import wool, but it doesn't have a colorway. But regardless, I absolutely loved it. It's very thin. So for this particular yarn, I used a size G four millimeter hook. And for today's example, we're going to be using some Pound of Love in a size I hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter hook. And what I also was fiddling around with this stitch is how to make it into a, uh, well, N, not A, N infinity scarf, yes. Uh, which could, of course, be uh, a cowl, or you could make this into a blanket, a regular scarf, really what have you. But for this, I wanted to make it into an infinity scarf. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Now, this is just one big, long, connected loop. Now, I don't like sewing in... I don't like sewing things together. Um, not my favorite thing to do. And so I figured out a way... Excuse me. <laughs> I figured out a way to finish this scarf by joining it together as you are doing the last row so that you don't need to actually sew it together. Very, very convenient indeed. Yes. So, you know what? That being said, let's get started. All righty. Okie dokie. So, first things first, you need your base chain. And I went ahead and started mine already. Now, for your base chain, you can make this piece as wide or as narrow as you want to. Like I said, you can make this into a blanket, a scarf, an infinity scarf, really whatever you like. Uh, however, you will need a multiple of six chains plus an additional three chains. So what I did was I did my multiple of six, uh, which was 24 chains, and then I added three more on top of that multiple. So I've got 27 chains here. You can, of course, like I said, make this as many multiples of six as you want to. Just be sure to add your additional three chains at the end, and we will be good to go. So for row one, and of course you can pause right now and do your, your base chain. Uh, for row one, I'm going to start by into the sixth chain from the hook, we're going to start our first cluster. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So into that sixth chain, we're going to do our first shell of a double crochet and another double crochet, chain one and two more double crochets all into that same chain. Like so. Then skipping two chains, going into that third chain with a double crochet. Skipping two chains, gonna do another shell into that third chain. So again, that's two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. Skip two chains into the third chain, do a double crochet, there we go. 
skip two chains into that third chain, do another shell. Now in the next row, we're going to start adding our texture. So we got our two doubles, chain one, two more doubles. Okay. And then skip two chains into the third chain, double crochet. Skip two chains into the third chain, do another shell. So that's two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. And if you counted right, which I hope I did, yep, skip those next two chains and into the last chain, do a double crochet. And there you go. That is row one. Very, very, very easy so far. And well, the rest of it's easy too, but you know what I mean. All right, onwards to row two. Okay, so we have our base already formed. Rows two and three are going to be the repeat for this particular pattern. And it is very, 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 very simple. So I'm going to start by chaining up three. And that's going to act as our first double crochet and turn the work now into the chain one space of our shell I'm going to make another shell so into that chain one space two doubles chain one two doubles chain one and two doubles okay then Around this double crochet, we're going to do a front post double crochet. Now, you don't want to be very tight when doing your front and eventual back post double crochets because it will have a tendency to curl um, and pucker a little bit. So you want to be a little bit looser than tighter when doing this. So going around the post not into the actual top of the stitch, but around the post, do a front post double crochet. And I find that it helps if you sort of raise up that loop of yarn a little bit. Give it some breathing room. Okay. And then from here into the next chain one space, another shell. So that's two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. And then around this next double crochet, front post, double crochet. And then into the chain one space of the next shell, another shell, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles, front post around the next double crochet, there you go, and then into the chain one space, another shell, so that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, Now at the end here, you do have two options. You can do a double crochet into this end chain right here by going underneath both loops right here and doing your double crochet. Yeah, it makes it a little bit neater. However, I find that if you want to get this done, it's a lot easier to just go into that loop, that space there and do your last double crochet. You know, I'm not judging. I, I did it myself for my project. So um, that is what I would recommend, quite frankly. So we have these raised, these ridges here for the end of row two. All right, let's go on to row three. Okay, so for row three, it's essentially the same, but instead of doing front post 
double crochets here, we're going to be doing back post so that the ridges remain consistent on one side of the fabric. So chain three, turn the work, and into the chain one space of our first shell, another shell, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, Okay, so now we have our double crochet. So we need to do a back post double crochet. The front post is going this way. Well, we're going to go around the back like so. And again, give yourself some wiggle room. And there you go. Into the next chain one space of your shell, do another shell two doubles, chain one, two doubles, back post the next double, give yourself some slack, shell into the next chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, back post around the next stitch, shell into the next chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, and double crochet around into this last space here. So as you can see on this front side, our posts are still doing their thing. Okay, onwards for a full repeat, and I will be right back. Okay, now because I do like to be thorough, we're going to do a full repeat of rows two and three. So we just did our back posts. So this next row, it's going to be front posts again. So chain up three, turn the work, get this tail out of the way. There we go. Into the chain one space, do another shell, two doubles, chain one and two doubles, front post around the front post, shell into the next chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, front post around the next front post, there we go, shell into the next chain one space, so that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles. front post around the next front post, shell into the next chain one space, and then double crochet into the last space. There we go. And then row three, chain up three, turn the work, shell into the first chain one space, chain one, 
two doubles. Back post, around the back post, so scooting around. Give yourself some slack. Shell into the chain one space with two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Back post around the back post. Shell into the next chain one space with two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Back post around the next back post. Shell into the next chain one space. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And then double crochet into the last space. Okay. And that is really all there is to it. Frankly, yes, it does have a front side and a back side, not in that order. Uh, but I do love how this looks absolutely positively. And now I'm going to show you how you can do that sort of join as you do the, the last row of your piece if you want to make it into an infinity scarf. So. Let's get to it. Okay, so I have another swatch of the same stitch, also using Pound of Love. Um, needed it to be a little bit longer so that I can show you a little bit easier than with the, the blue piece that I was just making. So what you want to do is, when you are ready to join your piece, you want to be working on a row three. You want to be working on the, the back side, if you will. Um, that's just what I found to be easiest. So what we're going to do is have our piece such that the end is going to be accessible. And I, I did not add any twist to this whatsoever. No twist. If you did do a twist, you would have a weird sort of Mobius thing where the the lines really don't line up, and I'll show you what I mean. But for now, I'm going to start by chaining up two, not three, just chain up two, and then grabbing your your other end. Now you could sort of line them up like this, although I think it's easier if you just sort of sandwich them together like this a little bit more. That's just me personally. So after chaining up two, going to slip stitch into this first space, because right here we have our first space, and then we have where our first cluster was, our first shell, and then another space, and that first front post, and so forth. So right now, just going to go into this first space with a slip stitch. There we go. And then into the chain one space, two doubles. And instead of chaining one, do a slip stitch into the base, that chain, where we did our first cluster. So we did our two doubles. Now slip stitch into here. And then finish up this shell with two more doubles. OK. So right now we're going to be doing a back post double crochet, but we're also going to be joining it to 
the post over here. So after yarning over, going in for a back post, and we're going to start it, but not finish it. And then, okay, so this is the corresponding post over here. So you know what? let me go back and start this over. Just, I mean, I'm going to do the whole row, but all right. So going in after yarning over, going around, pulling up a loop, pull through two, then finding the corresponding front post over here, going in, and then pull through all three. There we go. Then going into the next shell, two doubles, do not chain one, do your slip stitch into the base of that other shell on the other side, and then two more doubles. Okay. And then around your next back post, start the back post through two, and then grab the post of the corresponding one and sort of slip stitch. And then into your next cluster, two doubles slip stitch into the base of the corresponding cluster and two more doubles back post find the corresponding post grab your yarn and pull through the rest two doubles into that cluster, the shell, cluster, cluster, shell, slip stitch into the base of the corresponding shell, two more doubles, back post, come on, I'm having issues. There we go. And then find the corresponding post. Pull through all three. Two doubles into the next shell. Slip stitch into the base of the corresponding shell. Two more doubles. Back post. Go around the corresponding back post. There we go. Almost done. Two doubles. Slip stitch to the one in the back. Two doubles. Going into that last space. And then going into the space of the one in the back and finish up. And there you go. So if you look, it's pretty much seamless. Now let me flip it inside out or right side out. And I will show you what I am talking about. Now because this is all one color, it's a bit more seamless 
than the finished one that I made. And there you go. Is it 100% perfect? No, but you didn't have to sew it together now, did you? <laughs> I love it. I'm really quite happy. Okay. All right, so after you do that, of course, you can cut your end and pull out the loop and sew in the end and so on and so forth. But that's really all that you have to do if you wanted to make this into an infinity scarf. Otherwise, yes, you could, of course, make it into a, a blanket or a what have you. I really like this. It's a lot of fun. I think it's really quite easy. And with some really schnazzy yarn, it's really quite pretty. All right, so if you liked this tutorial, please do give a little thumbs up button down below. You know I appreciate your appreciation. And also do hit subscribe because I do try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations, or of course my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Would love to see you there. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.